hope you all have enjoyed learning about these different countries. I know I have. Today we're going to travel to a place that I always wanted to go and hopefully we'll visit there someday. We are going to Australia. So strap right in because this is going to be a long, 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 long airplane ride. Grab your snacks and let's go. So this book is similar to the book we read on Monday. It's going to be an Australian alphabet just like we read an Indian alphabet. So this is called D is for Down Under on Australian Alphabet, written by Devin Skillian and illustrated by Geoff Cook. Again, I'm not going to read every single page because it is quite a long book, but feel free to pause it and read the facts if you want to read them. Here is Australia. It is a really, really, really big continent. It's interesting because not only is it a country, but it's also a continent. A... We'd best begin our trip with a big Australian A for the Aboriginal people we'd meet along the way. Long ago, they understood in dreams, by and by, the spirit of Australia is in the land and sky. From Brisbane to Bondi, beyond and between, B is for the beaches, the best you've ever seen. Basking in the sunshine or bobbing in the bay, being barefoot on the beach is a perfect Aussie day. That is one of the main reasons I want to go to Australia is to visit their magnificent beaches. Our C is for the water with a very crooked smile. Don't come any closer. C is for crocodile. He sneaks along in silence looking for his food. He has a rotten temper and a nasty attitude. For letter D, some music please. We'll play a song or two. A sound like none you've ever heard. D is for didgeridoo. A didgeridoo hums deep and low, a quirky kind of buzz. Nothing else can make the sound an Aussie didgeroo does. Here comes our E in shades of brown and yellow. He's a ball of thorny bustles, a prickly little fellow. E is for echida. Licking at a termite mound, he rolls into a spiny ball when trouble comes around. He kind of looks like a porcupine. F stands for freedom, for the great land is free. It's more than an idea, it's the Aussie pedigree. The nation of Australia was a prison at the start, so freedom's forever cherished in the Aussie mind and heart. So an interesting fact about Australia is the European rulers used to send their criminals to Australia, so they would be far, far away from the people in Europe. You're swimming around in a snorkel and mask, staring in disbelief, surrounded by our letter G, the Great Barrier Reef. Sharks and starfish, turtles and whales, fish of every size, the colors of the rainbow parade before your eyes. That's going to be your challenge for today. You have to look up the Great Barrier Reef. It is incredible. It's considered one of the seven wonders of the world. H stands for Harper and one heck of a view. Welcome to Sydney, sparkling like new. Climb the Harbor Bridge, look down when you're done. You'll find the famous opera house soaring in the sun. I stands for Island, but one that's not too small. This island is enormous. Just try to see it all. There's no place else quite like it. That is clearly true. Australia is a continent but it's an island too. It's completely surrounded by water, which makes it an island. It'll be quite a job, our letter J. You'll be tending sheep on a long, hot day. You'll raise them up and shear them too, for that's the job of a jackaroo. Okay, it's for what? You'll find down under that K is key to the wonderful animals you're sure to see. Kookaburras laugh while kangaroos leap and cuddly koalas fall fast asleep. Does anybody remember what that figure of language is called when you have the same sound repeated? Kookaburras, kangaroos, koalas. You hear that K sound. Alliteration. 
in a land of many beaches, we'll need a watchful eye. Someone to keep us safe while the roaring tide is high. L is for lifeguard, watching the conditions. They try to prove their skills in thrilling competitions. When an Aussie meets you the very first time, he thinks, I'll bet you'll be a friend of mine. It's a tried and true Australian trait. So the letter M should stand for mate. Did y'all know that's how they greet each other in Australia? They say, good day, mate. I challenge y'all to say hello to somebody like that. I'll tell you a tale of the man on the run, wearing homemade armor shining in the sun. An N is for Ned Kelly, both hero and knave. Was he cunning and cruel or noble and brave? Hmm. We're hitting the road with a jeep full of gear, bound for the rugged Australian frontier. Oh, it's for outback, where legends abound, and wild and wonderful creatures are found. So their outback is kind of similar to our desert. P. It just may be the edge of the earth, but way out west, P is for Perth. The city of lights gleams with grace, shining a beacon for travelers in space. Q is for Qantas to help us fly. The Australian airline takes to the sky. When people want to see this world of wonder, Qantas brings them to the land down under. Go back to the beginning for letter R, when the world was dark and still. Back to the dream time where all was quiet and nothing lived until. The rainbow serpent shook off his slumber and slithered across the land, carving out the shapes of Australia from green forest to desert sand. A gathering of stars will light our way and guide us right to S. You'll find them up in the sky, of course, and on our flag, no less. The Southern Cross is five bright stars Australia holds so clear, for you'll only see them way down under in the southern atmosphere. We'll take a bouncy ball, we'll take a handy racket, we'll toss the ball so high, and then we'll really smack it. A T is for tennis, for it's a game loved by many here. And in Melbourne, the Australian Open is played each and every year. We've made our way to the letter U, and it takes us to a spectacular view. A sandstone mountain, noble and grand. Uluru stands on a sun-baked land. That's beautiful. Look at that little dog. For the letter V, take a slice of bread. Toast it and cover it in your favorite spread. It's a national food. It tastes just right. Down under, V is for Vegemite. Vegemite is a brown, sticky paste. Would y'all want to try that one day? I've heard that's not very good, but maybe y'all like it. We'll pick up a guitar and sing a catchy song, and everyone around us will be singing right along. Here we find our W ringing out before us, singing Waltzing Matilda, and Australia sings the chorus. It's a little risky. Our letter X, it just might give you chills. X stands for X Games, sports with extra thrills. Hop on board, hop on a bike, try to climb a wall. The X Games goes beyond the usual bat and ball. Have y'all ever heard of the X Games? They're athletes that do crazy skateboarding tricks and bike tricks and surfboard tricks. We do have that also in America. That's something similar. Y is for yabber, which a yubu might do. Do you follow what I'm saying? Do you even have a clue? To yabber means to talk too much. Any Aussie will agree. If you yabber without manners, a yubu you might be. If you look to the left right here, you're going to see a couple of Australian slang words. Barbie is a barbecue grill. Which one of these words are you going to try out today? And can confuse somebody you live with. There's a zest for living here, and that's our letter Z, for our Aussie lived a life that's full and proud and free. Wherever you go, you'll hear the pride and zesty Aussie joy. When you hear Aussie, 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 answer, oi, 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 
And that is our Australian alphabet. I hope that you learned something new. Your challenge for today is to go look up that Great Barrier Reef. I guarantee you will not be disappointed. It is incredible. That's why it's known as one of the seven wonders of the world. We're going to be looking at Australia again during our power hour tomorrow. So I challenge y'all to come back then. I love you all. I miss you all. And I'll see you this afternoon for our afternoon Zoom session. Bye.